hi guys welcome to the channel my name is favor for those who are new here um welcome, welcome welcome if you're new to the channel please hit that subscription button on this channel i film about my faith my experience here in glasgow and international student support content this is a very very long awaited video people are always and constantly asking me questions about accommodation particularly accommodation for family people who are married or people who have children in this video, I'm going to be answering all those questions. So stay tuned, get your notes part. If you're already in an international student, some of these things may be familiar with you. If you plan to resume anytime soon and you're coming with family, I strongly recommend you stay tuned and you keep watching. I'm an international student in at the University of Glasgow and I stay in a private student's accommodation. So most times I'm not able to answer those accommodation questions that has to do with family but in today's video i've got my lovely friend who is going to be answering all those <laughs> questions so um do you want to introduce yourself okay um, study? my name is ometere alabi and um i'm studying biomedical science yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> and she's married yeah. so she so she could she you could could you stay in the student accommodation well there are actually like student accommodations for okay. like couple yeah really but then like it's very limited as opposed to like you know accommodations for like single people and it's then, expensive like, it's like almost the same amount i think it's more expensive actually from what i found out because i asked someone um i can't remember the exact price but i know of a friend who spends like 400 ish for mm -hmm. her accommodation like single student accommodation okay. but then um the married lady that i spoke to i think hers was like getting to 600 ish yeah. yeah so um there are actually like student accommodations that university of glasgow provides or maybe your school can provide but it's very limited so you have to like book really early oh, one of studio apartments can you stay in studio apartments yeah but then the thing about the uk is that the landlords and then the letting agents they have like a rule so depending on the number of people in the family mm. that like you know gives you um an idea of what kind of house you should get so i have actually applied for like studio apartments but then they rejected yeah. me because i'm married oh yeah. wow well. they feel like married people should not stay in a studio <laughs> yeah, apartment yeah. like it's not convenient for them yeah that's fair so um yeah so if you have like two two children you can't stay in a one bed bedroom apartment Someone asks if you are single and you have a child you can actually just get a one bedroom apartment yeah. or a studio. I think the first general answer is there are um, family accommodation within student accommodation, mm -hmm. but they are limited, they are more expensive, and you have to book in really early. So, in case if I also have a video that talks on the different types of accommodation, so do well to check out that video. If I've not uploaded it before, check it out. If not, just check it out whenever. <laughs> so, as I've decided that okay you're not staying in a private student accommodation or in a university student accommodation and you now want to rent an apartment how do you go about this if you're trying to rent accommodation like from nigeria so oh that's not what i was going to ask yeah. that is it, can you need to wait till you get to yeah UK, you, or, have, you actually have to wait till you get to the uk so there's no way around this yeah because i'll give you a practical example <laughs> I started to send out messages to like letting agents in Nigeria to look for houses here and then they never answered me wow. so I decided to now use my friend's email address and my friend's UK number and then I literally got responses like in the wow. next minute so your number matters and then you'll just feel like you're on a, you're on a serious yes, person yes. if you're like from Nigeria so yeah you have to like make other arrangements for where you're going to stay before you now start looking for a place because you have to get the UK number to like okay. communicate with them so yeah they prioritize that and then that's the first thing getting the UK number the second thing is um having a budget <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what did I do <laughs> you have to know what you're willing to spend on rent you can't like the UK will make you very prudent with money because you can't lavishly spend anyhow. Like you can't just splurge on accommodation. And then you also have to consider um, the distance to where your school is and maybe like other activities that you have. Um, you know that if you're going to stay in a farther place, you're going to augment with your transportation and all of that. So those are like things to also consider. Then to look for accommodations, there are like several, um, you know, websites that you can find like Rightmove, Zoopla, 
um or you can link them as well yeah you can visit like the um Latin agent website like directly there's like one to let there's dj alexander and um you know i think prom books or something i can't remember the name but then there are like so many i will just look for them and send it to people <laughs> um so yeah those things are also like very very important like where you search for it if you go to spare room yeah spare room is mostly for shared accommodation mm -hmm. and then as a couple you can actually stay in like stay in a shared accommodation you so can like, stay there you can stay in a shared okay. accommodation without a child okay fair yeah. point without <laughs> a child and as a couple you can stay you in can a, stay in a shared in accommodation, shared accommodation. That, like maybe you just share the kitchen with like other people that have so you have your personal room and then your bathroom and then you just share the kitchen but most of the time the people that post on spare room are people that have houses like two bedroom apartments and then okay. they want to rent out like maybe one room and most times they usually require people that are single they give like a like a specific age bracket maybe 20 to 35 year old oh. male that also works oh. and does not smoke <laughs> does not have pets does not oh, have okay. kids or a wife and something like that yeah so um they also consider to so determine if yeah your budget, if your budget is more inclined to a shared room that could be something you consider. yeah and then proximity to shops because you don't want to be entering the bus 30 minutes away to where <laughs> you're gonna shop. go and get something literally i went to view a house one time and then i couldn't see any shop like on the streets like <laughs> i would have to walk down wow. so imagine like having like a heavy load of groceries and then you're trying to walk down because you're also trying to save money by not entering the bus so, you get. so yeah you have to consider like all these things as well let's go into the yeah. process now so these are factors to consider before yeah. you enter the process so you've decided all these things and you have you know contacted an agent you've gone for a viewing so a viewing what's what's a viewing for people who don't know what viewing like is? so you have one house 50 people can send a mail to mm. the agent for mm. that house so they cut it down they streamline it mm -hmm. when you're trying to apply for a viewing they ask some questions mm -hmm. like are you a smoker oh, do you okay. have pets do you have kids are you a student um what is your average income after before tax okay. um and all of that so they ask all of these questions and then once you like answer the questions they use it to streamline the number of people that they're going to accept to come and view the house mm -hmm. yeah so if they don't want people that smoke and then you're a smoker <laughs> obviously like you know that you're cancelled <laughs> from it and then if they don't want people that have children and then you have children you're obviously cancelled from it and then your income one person in the house has to have like a stable income like a full-time job so I'm a student and then my husband is working and obviously I can't have like a full-time job now so it has to be part-time so like our collective um, annual income together is what they consider at mm -hmm. the end of the day so um, with that they will now streamline it to okay these are the number of people that we can accept to come and view the house so viewing is just basically you coming into the house the agent gives you a tour um around the house shows you like the sitting room the kitchen the bedroom the toilet and then if you like what you see you check for all the fixtures you check that everything is working you check that the toilets are flushing well you check <laughs> like yeah tap is running well you ask questions about like bills how much um estimated um cost for your bill um what kind of heating um arrangements do you have is it gas central heating are you going to have like a prepaid meter where you just like put in the key card and then like um, fill your lights in or like you have to pay bills online how do you go about the whole thing so these are questions that you can ask when you're also viewing and then they just give you like a tour of the whole apartment and show you that things are working sometimes they even turn on like the washing machine to show you mm -hmm. they turn on the fridge mm -hmm. to show you that it's working as well so yeah that's basically viewing and then when you are done viewing the house and you're satisfied with what you've seen and then the questions and then you're interested you can um send them a mail and say that i'm interested in renting this flat mm. so most times you could have like five people also interested oh. in renting that particular flat so how yeah. do they cut us I really don't know <laughs> but they always say that they'll send the message to the landlord or the landlady and then they'll get back to maybe they like look at the applications look at who do you have to submit a reference not immediately 
Okay. Yeah, so they like, call it like a guarantor. Oh, guarantor. Yeah. So it's not immediately. How many? It's when they've decided that they're going with your she application. Oh, okay. Then you submit yeah. to class. Does it have to be someone in the UK? Someone that has stayed in the UK for like a while. How long? Um, I, it can be three years. Okay. But then has like, um, I think the cap is like has, um, or earns more than. 22 to 24,000 per year. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you have to find the guarantor. So people that don't have people in UK, how do they find guarantors like lecturers or who can they use? I think there is a way the school can help. I'm not so sure. But then I've heard that um, some landlords say that if you don't have a guarantor, you have to pay six months up front. Oh. <laughs> and who has that kind of money? <laughs> So <laughs> yeah, so basically, you just have to look for even if it's somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can you stand, know, in as a stand in as a guarantor for you. Then the landlady or landlord looks at your the application, application, and if she thinks that you're not going to owe her rent money, like or owe him rent money based on your income that you're getting, mm -hmm. um, they can decide okay, they're going to go with your application, and then they send you a mail. They either tell you to pay a holding fee, some people don't tell you to pay a holding fee. Is the holding fee like a deposit? It's like, oh, um, I'm agreeing to the fact that I've told you that the house is now going to be for you, like okay. we're going with your application. So it's like a, it's like a guarantee basically, yeah, something like that. So the holding fee is still part of the rent money. So if your rent is like 700 and they say you should pay a holding fee of 200, you know that when you move into the apartment or when you're done with like the whole process, the only amount you're paying for rent is five hundred because mm -hmm. you've already paid part of the money. So yeah, that's basically. I think that's the process in brief. So you apply. If your application is favorable, you have to bring a guarantor, pay a holding fee. What yeah. other things? You have to also show your payslip. Payslip. Yeah. Is that not part of the application process? Not the application process, like after the application process and then they've decided that they're going with your application and they want to rent the house to you, they will do checks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's when you provide your guarantor. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like us, they told us to provide a reference, um, a previous landlord reference. Oh, okay. So they can tell you to do that. Okay. And then you also provide a guarantor and then you have to show your place sleep. So if you are able one. to do all this, the yeah. house is yours. What if you are unable to like, meet one of the conditions? I don't think, <laughs> I don't think, I think maybe they, they, they have the right to discontinue with oh, your okay. application and then okay. go with someone else if you don't meet up that's with, fair. with the that's, documents. I think that's actually that's a fair deal. So it's not possible based on your own perspective to sort this out from Nigeria. You know, it's really hard. Or from wherever you're coming from. Some people from. have been lucky, but it's very hard. So what if, what if you get like the number? This is just a random question. You get the number, and have someone do the viewing for you. Oh yeah, yeah, people do that a lot. But you have to also be careful because people are using it for their <laughs> yeah. So when you came, did you stay in like an Airbnb? You know, I stayed in a in a friend's or a family friend's house. Okay, so that's also something you yeah. want to check out for before you are able to sort out your accommodation. So what are like, the pros? Let's say pros or you know you could have stayed in the same accommodation. So mm -hmm. what are like, the benefits of staying in this rented apartments and the disadvantages? <laughs> uh, let me just talk about the disadvantage because like, <laughs> there's so obvious. many disadvantages. I think the disadvantage <laughs> right now is like the cost um for the rent. Really? Yeah, <laughs> to me, because I know that you can get cheaper in other places. It's just because we needed something that was closer to school for okay. me. Yeah, so that's why um, it was like easy for us to just get here. But then I know you can get cheaper like options. So I think that's another thing too. The point here is you can get cheaper, but it will be farther from your school. Yeah. But that would still affect your transportation. Costs. Yeah. So basically, you just weigh the options. That's even with like bills and everything is still. Okay, I'm speaking, <laughs> I'm speaking in terms of my house. Maybe okay. I'm speaking in terms of my house. <laughs> but, I but like, so getting yeah, getting um. Getting um you know a private accommodation <laughs> like a one bed flat it depends yeah so bills are also something to consider but as you're a student you have to be sharp <laughs> let me tell you something you have to be sharp you are not allowed to pay council tax okay yeah 
and by virtue whoever you bring to the united kingdom with you is independent, independent. Okay. so your dependent <clears throat> is also not allowed to pay council tax because your dependent is in quote solely dependent on you so there are cases where you see online that the, the person earns a certain amount of money the person should pay like 25 percent of the council tax nope you will argue with them and say that you're not allowed to pay so it's not straightforward for the university of glasgow yeah mm -hmm. other schools is very straightforward the school sends your name to like the council tax board and then they exempt you like instantly mm -hmm. but for the university of glasgow you have to update your um address on the school's um student website and then also like opt in for them to send your name to the council, council tax board and then now do an application on oh, yeah, the yeah. yeah count no you're going to still have to be the one to oh, wow. yeah fill the application form on the council tax website mm -hmm. yeah for exemption and then when they check from the names that they brought from the university of glasgow and then they oh, see your name check. there yeah and then they're like criterias you have to be doing a full-time course you can't be doing like maybe a part-time course of there are certain certain criteria you see there you have to do like number of credit number of hours for like teaching and all mm -hmm. of that so yeah um that's how it is i think the disadvantage would be <laughs> the bills yeah the bills it depends on your house as well there's something called epc ratings um what's epc sorry <laughs> we'll find this find the name i always forget <laughs> but we'll find the name okay but then your epc rating yeah you have something like from a to i think g i'm not so sure or is it j so if your house is on an epc rating of a for like your council tax you know that the number of like your amount of um tax. tax you're going to pay is going to be less compared to someone who has or who rents a flat that has a j rating of so. j there's also like additional bills so usually the way it works in the uk you pay for your rent yeah then you have additional bills for people who stay in private student accommodation or university accommodation you the bills are included mm. most times it's <clears throat> it's rents plus bills inclusive in your payments yeah. but for people who are in rented apartment like shares they have to pay rent separately and sort out their bills themselves so these bills include electricity yeah. gas yeah, so council have, tax yeah. but as a student like she said you're not entitled to pay council yeah. tax fun fact there are actually houses that you would see that um the bills are included in the rent but the rent would yeah <laughs> it's just showing the rent so how much do you pay roughly for like bills just like um are we excluding like wi-fi and all of that okay you can just ex okay with wi-fi this is how much it would be without wi-fi so let me just say like phone bills electricity gas um everything together like roughly depending on how much we spend in the month maybe roughly like 80 90 ish 90 and i think they are very modest because it's just that I'm a husband, yeah. so if you have children, try not to spend too much. <laughs> They're really modest, so if you have children, so that would make it maybe 100 to 150. And yeah. we're, we're, we're in Glasgow, which is a major city. So if you're not going to a major city or something, this could also affect your views. And then your house rent is about how much? 750. 750. So, like, the major advantages of staying in this type of place, obviously, you have your privacy. Yeah. You <laughs> have privacy. Um, yeah, it's basically privacy to be honest, because I've seen shared apartments where you have to share the toilet. <laughs> That's a serious issue. <laughs> That's a serious issue. Even I ran sharing, away. Even sharing kitchen is a big deal, but if the kitchen is big like this. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not toilet, I ran away from my life. <laughs> okay, um, and then laundry. You don't get to pay for laundry. You no, know, it's like you yeah. Pay for laundry or that accommodation. Whatever you spend, it goes to your light bill eventually. Oh. So, okay, so like it's still like bills included and all. Are pets allowed? I don't know, but there's there are people in my building that have pets. So I think that if you're if you're coming with pets, these are things you check with your yeah. But smoking is not allowed. Smoking is not. But if you also smoke, you have to also confirm that from the agency. You go out to smoke. <laughs> okay, but I think that's the idea. Now you wouldn't smoke in the house. Yeah, you wouldn't smoke in the house because actually smoking in the house can ruin your. Um, cabinets and appliances i think like the smoke the nicotine or whatever shut does something to it. it starts to make it look brownish mm. so they want to keep their house looking okay at least when you leave another person can come and see it's habitable so that they don't have to spend so much money having to like refurbish it and
Yes. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Thank you for coming on the channel. Thank you so much for answering all the questions. I hope this has answered to a great extent most of the questions. I'll try to put the website that yeah. you mentioned and any other link I think will be helpful. Let me know in the comment section if this video was helpful. Let me know if you still have bordering questions. Like I said, she's a family person. In terms, she has a family, she has a dependent. I did not have a dependent, so it was not easy for me to answer all your questions directly. Yeah. But I think with this, to a certain extent, this may provide some clarity and yes let me know if this video was helpful check out the video that tells different kinds of accommodation so it will also help you with making the decision like this video leave a comment like i said once again hit the subscription button if you haven't it's the least you can do and <laughs> i will see you in the next one bye for now and thank bye. you for coming bye <laughs>